Hey, great. So your first step to make your Jen Stark inspired drip drawing <clears throat> is to use your fancy paper and you're going to do five to eight big drips across your paper from the top to the bottom. So it looks something like this at the end. I'm going to show you how to do that now. So with your pencil, you want to start probably from the top left corner of your paper and you're just going to draw drips. It really doesn't matter where it ends. Um, you can go all the way across your paper. You can stop in the middle, wherever you wanna go. Notice I'm only doing five to eight. I think some of us yesterday were doing like 10 to 20. Um, the five to eight is just gonna make your lives a lot easier when you start adding color. So this is number one. Number two can come from anywhere. This is number three. Number four. Number five. And then I'll do one last one. Six. Eh, maybe one more down here. Seven. So, this is seven lines. I think this is one, two, three, four, five, six, six lines. Something like this is gonna be perfectly fine for you and perfectly manageable for you when you start adding color. Your next step is then to just grab a colored pencil. And so we don't confuse ourselves when we start doing all of the detail lines. You're gonna outline each of these big drips first. And this doesn't have to be super perfect. You just want to make sure your lines are covered so that when we start the details, your big drips don't get lost in the detail ones. I chose a black pencil just because I know I'm gonna be using black and white later. So I'm hoping some of these lines get covered up. Remember, craftsmanship is everything in this project, so make sure you're doing everything precise. And so once I'm here, I'm ready to move on to my detail drips, or what we're calling them. And that is when you go back to each of these individual drips and sort of add the layers so that when you start adding color, your individual um, big drips will become single color schemes. And we'll talk about that a little later today. So I'm gonna start from the top just like I did before. Remember, you don't wanna to go too detailed with these. I'm not going all the way down in this drip because I know that's gonna drive me crazy once I start using my marker. But I do want it to be the same space between this main drip line. And I'm gonna keep on doing that until I have a complete page. If I run off the page, that's fine. I'm just gonna pretend like I keep moving. So again, not crazy detailed on the drips, just like the big drips. Um, and I'm gonna completely cover the rest of my paper like this. This way you can see the difference between the different sections because I used my colored pencil to go over my big drips. So it gets a little trickier once you go down your paper. Just try your best to stick to whatever line was formed by your big drip. And if you mess up, it's not a huge deal. You can just go back over it or erase with your pencil. So 
So you always want to copy the line that you created with the big drip. So I went ahead and skipped ahead to finish all of my details, but now you can definitely tell a difference between what were the details and which were the big drips originally. So once we get here and our page is full, it's time to add color. And before we add color, we do need to do a little pre-planning to decide what colors are gonna go where. So I do know, just like in Jen Stark's paintings and in her drawings, she mixes color with black and white. So I know I'm gonna have probably two or three sections that I'm just using Sharpie and leaving the paper white um, to create a little bit of contrast. Um, for my other sections, that's where you guys get to show your creativity. If you would like to do a rainbow color scheme, if you would like to do warm colors, cool colors, whatever it is you'd really like to do, now's your chance to shine. So you can see up here on this color scheme, I use the primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. For this color scheme, I stuck to the rainbow. Um, for this color scheme down here, I just did the cool colors. And then for this one up here, I did like red, pink, purple, whatever kind of patterns of colors you want to use is fine. But I do want you to do a bit of pre-planning in your art journal. So for me, if I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven big drips. I know I need to have seven color schemes picked out for myself. So in my art journal, I'm just gonna label them. I know I wanna have at least two black and white, which would be Sharpie in the paper. I know because I really want to showcase just the inspiration from Jen Stark. I wanna have at least one rainbow. Um, after that, I think I want to have a warm color, which would be, you know, your yellows, oranges, and reds. And then I do want to have a cool color, which is green, blue, and purple. And let's see, then I can mix them up. Um, you're going to have a marker bucket at your table, so you can, like, feel free to look in here. Um, for my last two, I kind of want to change it up a little bit more. I think I would like to have a green, pink, and orange one, just because I like those colors together. So I'm just gonna write that down. Green, it's a light green, orange, and pink. And then my last color scheme, I'll do black, the dark green, and blue because I also like those together. Dark green and blue. So now what I need to do, if I wanna go ahead and keep this with me so I can refer back to it, is I'm gonna start the coloring. So I just need to pick um, whatever section I wanna work from first and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock out my rainbow one because I think that one's gonna be sort of the most fun. So I can go ahead and cross that out. I'm gonna get my rainbow colors from my bucket. I can go ahead and lay those out in the order that I'm going to be using them. And let's get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully use my marker to outline whatever section I'm using. So I wanna use the rainbow on this top right section. So I'm going to start right where my big drip started with this colored pencil line and I'm just going to trace that colored pencil line. And then I'm going to go back to that top drip because I want to completely fill this entire section. Boom. So now I have sort of a border for myself so I can just go back in and color in with my marker. 
I'm not going crazy with my marker creating these really rough lines. I'm just using smooth lines going back and forth to fill in that white space. So once I have that, my first section is done. And I'm gonna keep moving up my drip in this pattern, the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, until I get to the very top of that drip. So with my orange, I'm gonna keep moving and then I wanna fill in the section. So this is when it's really important that we didn't do too many small detail drips because you will actually drive yourself crazy adding the colors. And then I would keep on moving to yellow, outlining that drip line and then filling in with color. And I would keep doing this for my entire section and then I would move on to my next color scheme on a different drip, all right? So you're gonna keep doing this. I'm not gonna bore you and do the whole thing on video. I'm gonna do a time lapse just to show what it should look like, how the process should look to get a nice fancy end result like this.